targeting Rafah. President Biden says such a move by Israel would be a red line as Netanyahu promises to go there, even as U.S. intel suggests the IDF isn't anytime soon. What a potential invasion would mean for their widening rift. And if the relationship between the U.S. and Israel at its tensest yet, at a consequential moment for the war in Gaza. Despite American resistance, Israel is readying an offensive in Rafah, the city in southern Gaza where over a million displaced Palestinians have fled. Israeli officials say that advance is not imminent, but with the operation looming, this weekend the public disagreement between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu intensified. Jeremy Diamond is in Jerusalem for us. Jeremy, it seems that this is an inflection point, sort of a call and answer here in this U.S.-Israeli relationship as the holy month of Ramadan begins. Well, Brianna, there's no question that there have been a lot of tensions behind the scenes between these two men. Uh, but increasingly, President Biden has been growing uh, critical of the way that the Israeli prime minister has been handling this war. Now Hamas's leader, Yahya Sinwar, is looking to use this month as an opportunity to launch a second wave of attacks in Israel to see if he can revive what he launched on October 7th. And Israeli officials very much taking that into account as they plan their military operations going forward. Brianna. All right. Jeremy Diamond, live for us from Israel. Thank you. Boris. Let's the presidential rematch race for 2024 is in full swing. Here in the next hour, President Biden will be plugging his plan to lower health care costs in New Hampshire. And we're also learning more about former President Trump's plans if he returns to the Oval Office. Last night, Trump posted a video of Hungary's far-right authoritarian leader, Viktor Orban, praising him after the two met at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. Orban told a Hungarian broadcaster that Trump will end the war in Ukraine, citing their conversation that Trump will not give, quote, a single penny for the war. We have CNN's Elena Treen joining us with details on this. All right, Elena, tell us a little bit more about this conversation between Trump and Orban. Right, well, Donald Trump heaped praise for Orban for roughly an hour. Uh, one source described it as a friendly meeting, another described it as a social meeting. But I think what's interesting to note here is that uh, the two of them are very similar in some ways, especially when it comes to their policies on immigration and the border. We know that both of them have called for a strong border uh, to keep immigrants out of their respective countries, what they discussed. They said that it was mainly about issues uh, important to Hungary as well as the U.S. And again, immigration being a key focus of that. And of course, as we see in this video, uh, the war in Ukraine as well. But what I want to point out here that I think is really important is that Donald Trump has a history, again, what a second administration for him would look like. And he really has been very, um, you know, positive and about his rhetoric when it comes to Orban saying he's a great leader. And Orban himself has said after that meeting, isn't hiding it. He's yeah. broadcasting it very loudly, which is so uh, important to take a look at it. And thank you for that report on it. Elena, appreciate it. Boris? The royal family and Kensington Palace is really in damage control mode today. This time it's over a photo of the Princess of Wales and her three children. After several international news agencies pulled the image saying that it appeared to be manipulated. Today, Princess Kate responding to the controversy. Palace, now that Kate has admitted manipulating the picture. Now, it might have been small tweaks. It might have been tiny little additions or switches and different. Uh, frankly, about these updates, which normally would be told about if it's going to be used as a news image. What does this do when it comes to trust between Kensington Palace and the royal family and the media? I, I think it's quite damaging because we assume that these are accurate images, that we are, if they're not accurate, uh, we have to question what we're getting. Although this might have been just a simple touch up. Um, by someone that wasn't an expert in those Adobe skills, frankly. Yeah, uh, certainly. What an interesting, odd story it has turned out to be. Max Foster, thank you so much for getting us up to date on this. Out of the public eye, but very much on their minds. People in Britain and really the whole world want to know what is going on with the Princess of Wales, as an edited photo only fuels concerns about her health. We're following these major developing stories and many more, all coming in right here to CNN News Central.
In the Middle East, a Ramadan ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has not materialized. And now Israel is preparing in advance into Rafah despite resistance from the Biden administration. President Biden says that offensive would be a red line. Hours later, Israel ben, uh, Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu rebuffed the warning, the latest example of their disagreement spilling into public view. CNN's Jeremy Diamond is in Jerusalem for us. Jeremy, the White House just weighed in. It looks like they're downplaying these tensions. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, we are standing by for the start of a worldwide threat assessment hearing on Capitol. First, though, new fallout from the GOP's rebuttal to President Biden's State of the Union address. Alabama's junior senator Katie Britt is facing criticism after appearing to suggest President Biden's border policies led to a woman being sex trafficked as a child. That survivor is now speaking out after Senator Britt said this. Rafael Romo is with us now. And Rafael, you spoke to the woman that Senator Britt uh, appeared to be referring to. What did she tell you? Uh, Brianna, she told me she's upset. She's concerned to her to ask for her permission to use her story as part of a political speech. Someone using my story, she said, and distorting it for political purposes is not fair at all. Brianna? Yeah, it's sort of very strange. Rafael, thank you so much for taking us through that. We appreciate it. Boris? Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Jamaica for an emergency meeting on the worsening crisis in Haiti. The U.S. Embassy in Haiti has evacuated all non-essential personnel due to the heightened gang violence near the embassy's compound. There are now growing concerns the violence could expand beyond the capital area. Let's go to CNN's Patrick Oppmann covering Blinken's visit for us. Patrick, what's the latest? And Blinken has been meeting with the Jamaican uh, Prime Minister and other regions located, uh, come under a gang, uh, gang violence and gunfire and uh, receive some of those coordinated attacks uh, that we are seeing more and more of. For the Haitian people, it is an entirely different story. Uh, thousands have been forced from their homes, cannot receive any soon, Brianna. All right, Patrick, thank you for the very latest, obviously very alarming, the picture you're painting there in Haiti. We are learning some new details. I did not see this one coming. A new Pew study shows teens may be starting to unplug. About 40% say they've actually cut back on how much time they spend on social media. The findings coming as concerns over the effects of social media on young users' mental health is obviously a big concern. We have CNN's Claire say. Well, Brianna, I mean, I think this is a really good sign. We have for years heard from parents, from lawmakers, from educators with concerns about the impacts of social media. Yeah, the anxiety part, that's called withdrawal. The peace comes after, I find anyways. Claire, thank you so much for taking us through that. Still ahead, France. There's some new warnings today that the French appetite for the delicacy of frog legs is actually threatening the existence of some species. A group of more than 500 environmental activists are warning French President Emmanuel Macron the frogs are becoming endangered in the countries that export them to the EU and France. Yet yeah, the appetite is pretty big. That's the issue here. Europe imports more than... This is like where I'm outing remember. you for doing something terrible. They, I mean, is it terrible to eat frog legs? Well, if I'd known it was so terrible... A little bit of salt. That guy looks pretty good. Wait. They switched was, it on you. He they was over here. Her. They switched yeah, it on me, in right. fairness. Pierre, we're very sorry. The CNN... New really Central sorry. logo does look delicious. We have to toss it to the lead with Jake Tapper. Yeah, I fail. Thanks Total fail. Us. I'm out. <laughs>